May 16th, St. Ubald, or Ubaldo in Italian, Bishop of Gubbio. We are fortunate in possessing an excellent and reliable biography of Ubald Baldassini, Bishop of Gubbio, compiled by Theobald, his immediate successor. The saint descended from a noble family in Gubbio, became an orphan at an early age, and was educated by his uncle, also bishop of the same see in the cathedral school. Having completed his studies, he was ordained priest and appointed dean of the cathedral, young though he was, that he might reform the canons amongst whom grave irregularities were rampant. The task was no easy one, but he succeeded before long in persuading three of the canons to join him in a common life. Then, that he might obtain experience in the management of a well-conducted household, he resided for three months with a community of regular canons which had been established in the territory of Ravenna. The rule which they followed he brought back to Gabio, and within a very short time it was accepted by the whole chapter. A few years later, after their house and cloisters had burnt down, Eubald thought it a favorable moment to retire from his post into some solitude. With this object in view, he made his way to Font Aviano, where he communicated his attention to Peter of Rimini. That great servant of God, however, regarded the plan as a dangerous temptation, and exhorted him to return to the post in which God had placed him for the benefit of others. The saint accordingly returned to Cubio, and rendered his chapter more flourishing than it had ever been before. In the year 1126, St. Eubold was chosen Bishop of Perugia, but he hid himself so that the deputies from that city could not find him. Then he went to Rome, threw himself at the feet of Pope Honorius II, and begged that he might be excused. His request was granted, but when two years later the see of Gobbio fell vacant, the Pope himself directed that the clergy should elect Eubald. In his new office, the saint displayed all the virtues of a true successor to the apostles, but perhaps his most distinguishing characteristic was a mildness and patience which made him appear insensible to injuries and affronts. On one occasion, a workman repairing the city wall encroached upon his vineyards and were injuring his vines. He gently drew their attention to this. Thereupon the foreman, who probably did not recognize him, became abusive and pushed him so roughly that he fell into a pool of liquid mortar. He rose up, splashed all over with lime and dirt, and without a word of expulsion, returned to his house. Eyewitnesses, however, reported the incident, and the citizens clamored loudly that the foreman should be punished. So great was the popular indignation that a severe sentence seemed a foregone conclusion. Then St. Eubald appeared in court and claimed that since the offense had been committed against an ecclesiastic, it came under his jurisdiction as bishop then turning to the culprit he bade him give him the kiss of peace in token of reconciliation and after a prayer that god would forgive him he directed the man to be set at liberty the saint often defended his people in public dangers the emperor frederick barbosa during his wars in italy had sacked the city of spoleto and threatened to subject gubbio to a similar fate eubald met the emperor on the road and diverted the tyrant from his purpose during the last two years of his life the holy bishop suffered from a complication of painful diseases which he bore with heroic patience on easter in the year 1160 although very ill he rose to celebrate mass and that he might not disappoint his people preached and gave them blessing he was carried back to bed from which he never arose again at pentecost as he lay dying the whole population of gabio filed past his home anxious to take a last farewell of one whom each individual regarded as his dear father in god eubald died on may sixteenth eleven sixty and the people who flocked to his funeral from far and wide were eyewitnesses to the many miracles god performed at his tomb his body had first been buried in the cathedral church by the bishops of perguia at the time of his canonization was found flexible and incorrupt and then was placed in a small oratory on top of the hill overlooking the city where in a year 1508 at the wish of the duke of urbino the canons regular built a beautiful church frequented to this day by numerous pilgrims who come to visit the relics of their heavenly protector from near and far